Hey guys, it's Adam with Action Esports, and today I'm talking to Brian Kibler. Kibler, how you doing? I'm doing pretty well. You know, just hanging out here at the championship here. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, it's the HCT Fall Championships. How's this event been for you so far? Uh, it's been good. You know, we had a fast first couple of days. A uh, lot of uh, you know really high level play from some of the players. A little bit less so from others, but always good to see you know the various sort of sides of the spectrum and uh, the better players generally coming out on top. Sure. So for those that may not know you and your history, can you tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do with Blizzard as well as on your own channels? Well, um, I have been a competitive. Uh, card game player slash commentator slash uh, content creator uh, for a very long time now. I started playing uh, card games, what, 24 years ago? Uh, I am in the Magic the Gathering Pro Tour Hall of Fame. I've been involved in Hearthstone for the past, what, four years now, pretty much? Uh, more or less, since it came out, I, I started playing in open beta and then started doing uh, commentary uh, late 2015. I, I've cast since the, what was it, the... Uh, kind of like last call tournament slash America's Championships last year, uh, that year and have cast pretty much every major uh, championship event since then. So uh, you know what you're talking about. <laughs> it's, it's I like to, to think so at least, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Excellent. How have you been feeling about the Year of the Raven competitive scene when compared to previous years? Is there anything about these sets or these metas that stand out to you? I think that we've seen uh, strong players do incredibly well throughout the Year of the Raven. For instance, uh, Just Saiyan. Uh, who's a player who has been known as a top competitive player for a very long time. He had you know, a really breakout year where he won you know, a huge number of events. Uh, he qualified for, for this tournament and in fact is in the quarterfinals of this tournament already, just as we're, as we're talking right now. Um, so I think there's a lot of elements of the decks that are powerful in the current metagame that do tend to uh, make the uh, gameplay and the, the skills of those players really shine. Excellent. Can you talk to me a little bit more about that? We, you have stated in the past, you know, the Boomsday meta um, definitely allows for a lot more variety in decks than some of the other competitive metas we've seen. Um, how does that factor into seeing the actual skill level of the players come out in their decision making with deck selection and all that fun stuff? One of the big things about metagames that have a lot of different viable decks, uh, even if they're not necessarily every class has representation. For instance, there are no Paladins in this tournament. But there are, for instance, I think four different versions of, of Druid. And being able to understand the elements of not only the deck that you're playing, but the decks you're playing against, and what their key cards and sort of key win conditions and what they're working toward are, uh, makes it you know very uh, is very valuable if you're a competitive player and you're trying to not only make your own deck work, but figure out how to dismantle your opponent's plan. Excellent. So uh, we have BlizzCon just around the corner. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to? Uh, unsurprisingly, I'm looking forward to finding out what's next for Hearthstone at BlizzCon. You know, we pretty much always get an expansion announcement at, uh, at BlizzCon and, you know, often sort of cool stuff to go along with that. Uh, I'm going to be watching the uh, Hearthstone Global Games finals that are there. Uh, I'm not casting it, but I'm going to be, you know, excited to see who does come out on top there. Excellent. So this will be um, the second BlizzCon in a row with no HCT attachment. How do you feel about the scheduling with Hearthstone and its esports scene being detached from Blizzard's biggest event of the year? It's interesting because I think it's important that there's something big for Hearthstone at BlizzCon. Uh, I do feel like having the HGG finals this year at BlizzCon uh, you know, is a big deal. It'll be you know, an event that people are really invested in. Uh, I will say that I think it was a little bit disappointing that there wasn't like the World Championship or some similar big event for Hearthstone last year. It was cool to do you know, the Invitational, but it didn't quite have the weight. Uh, it's still probably my favorite event that I've ever cast was the World Championship at BlizzCon a few years ago and Pavel won. And just the energy in the room and just how hype everyone was. I think I, yeah, at one point I was just you know, shouting out like, you know, oh, someone got like an angry chicken off a maelstrom portal. I'm like, let's hear it for angry chicken. And this you know, entire hall full of people goes wild. And it's hard to replicate that at an event that, that isn't BlizzCon. So um, I'd like to broaden this out a bit more and talk about the state of digital card games in general. So with MTG Arena in open beta and Artifact just around the corner, how do you see the digital card game landscape developing over the coming months or a year? Uh, I think it's really cool to see a bunch of new digital card games coming out, uh, especially ones that we can sort of expect to be high quality, uh, because there was sort of a, a flood of other games trying to get in on the market once Hearthstone kind of proved, hey, this is, this is a real thing. Uh, and, you know, Kind of the, the saying, uh, rising tide lifts all boats. I think that uh, Hearthstone brought 
a, a lot of new people to the marketplace who are interested in playing trading card games. You know, previous to that, uh, you, know, you basically only had physical games that, that had a lot of success, and now seeing just that how popular games on tablet or on mobile and everything can be in the, in the card game space, uh, I think is just really good overall for anyone who's interested in the genre. Um, so, you know, Hearthstone in its developmental phase uh, took a lot of inspiration from games like Magic. I think every card game naturally did after after Magic's success. And uh, Magic seems to have kind of done the, the, the opposite and learned back from them and how to make a more engaging digital platform. How do you feel about seeing Magic take on this um, this state uh, and, and step away from their like Windows 2000 kind of aesthetic? <laughs> well, as, as someone who you know, played Magic from a sense of the beginning and who played Magic Online since it was in beta, I think in 2002, um, I have never been happy with the state of digital magic, and in fact, uh, I, I, I think we went like pretty much a tirade one time when I was playing in a, a tournament on Magic Online, and it, you know it, the entire program crashed, and I was undefeated in this tournament. And they're like, "Well, we don't have the technology to recreate the tournament in the state it was, so we're just going to replay it next week." I'm happy to see, you know, as a fan of digital card games in general, Magic in particular, they're sort of uh, taking a cue from Hearthstone and getting their act together because you know, I think that there's a lot of potential in the, the genre in general and uh, you know, hope to see other games sort of rise to the level that Hearthstone has set. Sure. So, uh, the same way that Magic is kind of the grandfather of all paper card games to follow, do you think Hearthstone's going to strike that same note uh, as, as far as the digital platform? I do think Hearthstone has really set the standard for digital collectible games. Uh, you, you see lots of games that, you know, as I said earlier, just kind of try to basically just totally copy the model that Hearthstone really set. We do see some of the games that are coming out now that are taking a very different approach. Uh, for instance, Artifact, I think, is doing essentially none of the sort of industry standard things that Hearthstone really uh, set, which is it's not free to play. You know, there's there's uh, no like ability to like earn cards just by playing. You have to buy packs. You can trade cards, which you know essentially Hearthstone you know made into something which people didn't expect anymore, which was kind of something very different and coming from the world of paper games. Uh, also, you know, frankly, like uh, Artifact, I think is very complicated. When most games have tried to follow the model of Hearthstone, it's like, ah, oh, well, it's it's really sort of simple to get into, and the depth is you know purely in sort of the strategy and the gameplay itself, rather than in you know trying to understand what's going on. You know, you have a bunch of bright colors and big numbers and it's easy to, to parse a game state by looking at it as opposed to like, well, every single thing on the board has like six abilities. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of Artifact, I mean, where do you think that that game existing as it does is going to fall within the kind of grand, greater scheme of things? I think it's hard to say where Artifact will fall. I, I do think that it's a game that appeals largely to like very high-level competitive players. I've seen a lot of you know pro-level Magic or Hearthstone players who've been excited to see the game come out, and also just a lot of people who are just excited to see what Valve is doing. You know, I, I think that I think that if Artifact weren't a game that were sort of coming from a, a big company like Valve uh, with sort of a, a an IP like Dota, that it would have a, a very hard time finding a market because it is targeting, it seems to me, like a fairly niche market, which is people who really want to rack their brain every single turn, because uh, you know, literally the first turn of the game can be really complicated in, in Artifact, uh, in my experience, and it doesn't get easier from there. <laughs> so you know, I think that if people are looking for you know, a, a, a major sort of strategic and tactical challenge, it's potentially a great opportunity for them, but I don't know that it will uh, appeal to as wide an audience as Hearthstone does. So we've seen really high viewership numbers for Magic Grand Prix in paper form and stuff, even with uh, kind of poor camera technology, if you will, to see what's actually going on on the board. Um, with MTG Arena, do you foresee kind of a resurgence in popularity for Wizards? I, mean, I think we've already seen uh, viewership numbers going up for Magic uh, you know, as far as Twitch streams go. Um, you know, I know that when I streamed Magic, before I even you know, really started playing Hearthstone, I was among the most popular Magic streamers and would get you know, at most like a couple thousand viewers at any given time. Uh, and often when I would be playing Hearthstone, once I started streaming that, and then switch over to play Magic Online preparing for a tournament, I would keep you know, a small fraction of my viewers because it's you know, basically watching someone play Excel. You know, <laughs> it just wasn't visually appealing. And I think uh, the, the medium that they have now with you know, sounds and animations and just a much smoother game gameplay uh, is definitely far more appealing for viewers. I'll, I'll see people uh, you know, in the chat who are saying, oh, this looks cool, I want to try it, like, how do I get into it? And that's very different than we've seen in the past. Right on. So in your career, you've been immersed in many different scenes. Um, how would you compare the communities around things like paper card games with Magic or the, the WoW TCG? 
uh, with the digital card game communities of like Hearthstone or Shadowverse with the more traditional tabletop board game communities of like Ascension or Dominion? I think most of the card game communities, most of the gaming communities, period, that I've been involved in have actually been pretty similar, just in terms of the fact that there are a bunch of smart people who are passionate about this thing and they want to get together and play. And, you know, whether a community is online or in person, you have, you know, a lot of the same sort of bonds forming. And when people, you know, meet each other for the first time, whether it's people who argued about sideboard slots meeting at a Grand Prix or people who have, you know, played on ladder in Hearthstone dozens of times who finally meet an event like this, you know, I think you have the same sort of level of camaraderie and uh, sort of, like I said, shared passion over the, the experience that you've had in the games. So as uh, these games develop, do you think there's going to be a lot of um, sharing of ideas or inspiration? Like, do you, do you foresee changes in mechanics, like adding a graveyard to Hearthstone or adding a, a more static mana system to you know another game or something like that? I think it would be crazy for games to not evolve based on what they learned from other games. You know, for instance, I mean, Hearthstone is in a lot of ways an evolution of the original World of Warcraft trading card game, which I worked on years and years ago. Um, and it's not to say that like anything is you know a a like monolithic thing in its own right. I mean, obviously every collectible card game sort of descended from Magic, but Magic is clearly learning things from Hearthstone in terms of where it's going in the digital realm. Uh, I wouldn't expect to see like major game engine rewrites that fundamentally change like the character of a game, um, but I do think that we'll see sort of borrowing good ideas here and there. Right on. So what do you think Hearthstone will need to do to stay ahead of the curve with Valve and Wizards um, as, as like major competitors? I think Hearthstone does the things it does very well. Uh, one of the things that makes Hearthstone so appealing is the fact that it is so accessible and it is uh, so quick and fun for a lot of people. I, I think that there's a lot of people who want to push Hearthstone to be you know, something that is much more complicated and competitive and, and, and I can understand and appreciate that. Um, but what I want to see is, is ways for those people to kind of get what they want from Hearthstone without bogging it down for the other people. Um, you know, I was pretty disappointed, as I, as I mentioned on a number of my videos, that there was uh, sort of a retraction of the upcoming tournament mode we heard about uh, in Hearthstone. And I, I do hope that there are sort of more features that come out that can support the style of gameplay that you know, serious invested players are looking for, um, rather than you know, supporting you know, casual players alone. I do feel like the, the people who've been playing the game forever and you know, really want to compete kind of feel left out sometimes. But I mean, then again, here we are at the championship, so there, there are clearly opportunities for those players as well. Sure. So, uh, you know, most successful card games other than Magic seem to have uh, a basis in more recognizable IPs. So what's uh, what's an IP that you would really like to see turned into a card game? Ooh, what's an IP I'd like to see turned into a card game? So many have already been, but they've just been games that haven't necessarily been terribly successful. One of the difficult things about card games and making a, a world around a card game or, you know, creating or taking a world for a card game uh, is that you actually just need so much stuff. Like, for instance, I'm a big fan of, say, like, Game of Thrones or Stranger Things, but it's like, how do you make a expanding universe that includes, you know, so many, uh, like, versions of, of, of these characters when you have, like, a kind of small cast in these, uh, in these particular instances? I know there have definitely been at least one, probably more, Game of Thrones TCGs, so we'll go with Stranger Things. All right, right on. Um, so what are some of your goals or personal plans going forward into the year? What are some of my goals or plans going forward into the year? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> um, mostly, I just really enjoy doing what I have been doing. Though, you know, to be fair, I, I sometimes do sort of look back and I'm like, you know, how long can I keep doing what I have been doing? As I said, I've been playing games for you know twenty something years. I've been doing it professionally essentially my entire adult life, and I love doing it. Um, but you know, I sort of wonder, like, how long will I want to like be on camera every single day, streaming and such? I hope that people will still want to watch me as long as I want to do it. Uh, but you know, sort of exploring other opportunities. Maybe there's you know some sort of like gaming TV shows that uh, I could get involved in or something like that. I don't know. It'd be fun. Right on. So you are uh, one of the few kind of great common denominators between a lot of these card games. What kind of effect do you think you've had on the growth of, of the card game industry as a whole? Kind of effect I think I've had on the growth of the card game industry. Jeez, that's it's a weighty question. I don't yeah. know. Hopefully a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think that I've had a positive impact on the communities that I've been a part of. Um, but I mean, one thing that I do really set out to try and do is is set a good example for people who are in these communities because I, I do think that uh, whether it's you know as a player or as a commentator, as a, uh, a streamer, that. You know, a lot of people, when you are a public figure, people do you know, sort of look up to you as an example. And I think that I have tried to be someone who uh, makes the world a better place by people emulating me. You know, 
being friendly and open and inviting and, you know, appreciating my luck and laughing off my bad fortune rather than complaining when things don't go my way because, hey, I, I play games for a living. How unlucky could I really be? So, Kibley, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with me. In closing, do you have any words for uh, your fans, your viewers, or things you'd like to plug? Uh, do I have anything I want to plug? Any words for my fans? Uh, yeah, just, you know, I appreciate all of you supporting me and watching my content and uh, buying ridiculous shirts with Shiro on them because he's so adorable. He very much is. Thank you so much, Kibler. Appreciate it. <laughs> Absolutely. My pleasure.